Hi everyone, this is the beginning of a, a series of videos uh, tactically based and uh, I'm going to be covering different themes and I'm going to put them in separate categories. So this is going to be the first one. This video is uh, based on a real simple beginner's concept and it's based on bringing the queen out too early and I'm going to um, I'm going to make several videos on that, you know, and then move on to a different topic, you know, for instance, isolated pawns or something like that. So this first game is between Richard Reddy, one of the uh, fathers of the so-called hypermodern and modern defenses. This game took place in Buenos Aires in 1924 um, against a player named Roberto Grau. And this is uh, the year also that Richard Reddy uh, broke uh, Jose Raul Capablanca's uh, streak of not losing a chess game in eight years. So Richard Reddy was um, definitely uh, on on form this year. So the game started out C4, English, Knight F6, G3, D5. Again, this is another good setup, usually to avoid... Uh, preparation that's very uh, flexible so again if you don't have time to prepare a lot for uh, tournaments etc this is a good setup as white to go in to also because you can practically play it against anything and then the c4 pawn um, uh, does put some pressure on the center so you're not just say playing just g3 and giving up the entire center you might not be comfortable with that so c4 at least sticks one pawn in the center. And as you see, when black plays d5, c takes d5. <clears throat> so black will not have a, a full center. Now black has an important choice. Does he take with uh, the knight or the queen? <clears throat> well, in this game, uh, both both uh, choices are okay. But he uh, took with the queen, which is fine. The idea, of course, is uh, against little time here and notice the similarities between this opening you know or this position rather uh, in this opening with the Scandinavian defense where knight f3 c6 and knight c3 is played and queen a5 now just keep this position in mind and this is why it's important to uh, know your pawn structures right keep this position in mind so this came out of an English now let's look at the Scandinavian you normally play it may go something like this and that's just so you know the similarities pawn structure yeah, I'll throw the knight on f6 and you see the queen on a5 so even though it's a totally different opening the themes are going to be very similar so get back to our game after knight c3 the queen is attacked and the queen goes to a5 Ready continues with bishop g2, <clears throat> bishop f5, respectable looking move, just getting the bishop out before playing e6 so that the bishop is actively participating in the game. Ready castles, the game looks, you know, pretty normal. E6, there it is. Now, my friends, this pawn structure, structure that Black has is known as a Carol Slav uh, pawn structure. And the reason being is because the of the names of the openings it's mostly associated with, which is the Carol Khan, and the other is the Slav. Again, real quick, for beginners, C6.
and this is the Carol Khan opening or one variation of it and notice the pawn structure with pawns on c6 and e6 with the d uh, in this case without the d5 pawn very solid structure but notice that uh, black it lacks in a little bit of space and here's the Slav and this denotes the Slav uh, structure three and then there's um, different uh, variations that can be played here let's say for instance D takes <clears throat> a4 e6 and again you have the <clears throat> the similar similar pawn structure <clears throat> from black so this is why it's called the Carol Slav pawn structure again different openings same pawn structure so ideas are generally the same the differences will occur in peace and uh, peace placement but the main strategy and the ideas as far as pawn breaks etc are going exactly the same but back to our theme c6 knight c3 queen a5 bishop g2 bishop f5 castle e6 and if you notice the bishop often comes to f5 in, in the slav but we have again our carol uh, pawn structure usually important uh, for black is to getting these breaks c5 or e5 d3 is played knight bd7 Bishop d2. Now, here's an important theme I always bring up is opposition. Notice how the bishop on d2 is opposing the more valuable piece, queen on a5. Now, that queen might not move right now, but being under pressure, it's going to be forced to lose time at some point. Bishop e7, completing the development. And now, things get a bit sharp here. Ready plays knight d4. And wanting to open up the diagonal for this bishop. And also t uh, threatening to take over, take the bishop here. So bishop g6. And now white cashes his chips in. Playing knight d5. Unveiling the bishop attack on the queen a5. So after all, white will gain the bishop here. After queen d8, knight takes e7, queen takes e7. So, although black loses the bishop pair, he retains his castling rights. Now, queen b3, so we see that white has this initiative, this attack on the pawn here. And now, instead of playing a move, uh, say like rook b8 or something like that, and just accepting a, a you know slightly worse position um, black comes up with this plan to play queen c5 and queen b3 initiating a trade of queens here in this position so then we see this theme again the bishop opposes the bishop on a3 opposes the queen on c5 and Black follows through with, with his plan. And his argument is that it's not a big deal because I'm getting ready to trade queens anyway. So if you move that knight somewhere, you know, I'm going to just trade trade off the queens. So, for instance, if black, excuse me, if white try to move like knight e6, then just simply queen b3. And maybe knight g7. Check king f8. And after a takes b3. King takes g7, and it's really uh, not too big of a deal. And black is, you know, black is all right here. Black is surviving. So black felt pretty good. However, 
Notice that with the absence of the dark square bishop, white can now occupy the dark squares freely and also maintains a dark square bishop of his own. So it's the combination of these two features. What two features? The absence of the dark square bishop and subsequent weakness of the dark squares in the black position and also the uh, over uh, use of the black queen. The queen is moved around uh, more than necessary in the uh, this opening and has uh, left herself exposed tactically. So white is going to create a combination combining those two features. The weakness on the dark squares and the exposure of the black queen. So queen a3 is played. Great move. Preventing uh, white from castling uh, on the king side. And now the threat still remains. Now that means that black must waste more time moving the queen again. So queen c7. Now queen d8 is probably a bit better because at least the queen is out of the immediate uh immediate uh, range of fire problem with queen c7 is that after rook a c1 again there's that theme of opposition again you have these moves on the table where the knight can't be captured because of the queen being exposed and then the follow up now the problem with queen d8 and this is why queen c7 was played is because of the tactical shot bishop takes c6. And if b takes c6, knight takes c6. And notice the queen is attacked again. And also mate is threatened if the queen moves. So for instance, if the queen goes to c8 and simply checkmate. And notice there's nowhere for the queen to go. So that is the problem. And, and it's all due because of the weakness of all because of the weakness on the dark squares. Okay, so queen c7 is played as a stopgap to guard the c6 square from bishop takes c6. So rook a c1 is played. And. Black jumps out with queen e5. Right, trying to get out of that situation. And unfortunately, black runs into the same difficulty. And after bishop takes c6 by Richard Reddy, Roberto Grau resigned. And the reason is the same. If b takes c6, Just show it to you real quick. Then you get the same thing with the uh, discovery of the knight coming here. And again, there's no way to defend the queen on e5 and also stop the mate on uh, e7. And that's why uh, he was forced to resign. The only other way to deal with this is to uh, just simply give up a lot of material. For instance, queen b8 or something like that. And then just simply bishop takes d7 check. And he's just uh, losing a lot of material. So that was the first video in our installment. Um, dealing with bringing the queen uh, out too early. Okay, so that was a shorty but goody. Hope you enjoyed that. And please like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video.